Well, hello. Uh, welcome to Explore the Essentials. This is actually Lesson 11. We're going to carry on this week looking at the life of a man called David. Now, last time in Explore the Essentials, we looked at David and remembered that he was a shepherd boy and a shepherd boy who was anointed that one day he would be the king over Israel. And we remember that he had a great victory. Can you remember that? The, the great victory that he had over Goliath. And there was a song made about him. Now, at, the, at that time, Saul was the king and David was the one who would one day be the king. Well, what happens is that David did, in fact, as God said, become the king in his country. And I'm going to tell you today two episodes in David's life. They are quite different episodes. One is good and one is bad. We will learn about David, the good and the bad. So not a perfect king by any means, but he was overall a good king. Now David actually wrote what we call Psalms, and Psalms are songs. They're in the Bible, it's like a hymn book in the Bible, Psalms. He, he, he wrote them and in fact, he, when he was with Saul, sometimes he played his harp and he could sing and he would, the psalms that he had written. Let me tell you about one of them, perhaps the most famous one. The most famous one is called Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd. You know, I think David wrote that when he actually was a shepherd, when he was doing shepherding. And he thought how he was a shepherd and as a shepherd, he cared for his sheep, he fed his sheep, he led them, and he protected them. And David reflected about the Lord God. And he says, you know, the Lord God is my shepherd. Now, I'm a shepherd to these sheep. The Lord God is my shepherd. He loves me, he cares for me, he leads and guides me, and he protects me. And so he wrote, the Lord is my shepherd. Now, David wrote quite a lot of these psalms. Some he wrote when he was the king. And we're now going to move to that time when he was the king in his country. Now, David one day thought about Saul, the old king. And Saul had a son called Jonathan. Now, when David thought about them, they had both gone. Their lives were over. But David asked a question of the people in his court. He says, is there anyone still alive of Saul's house? Now, most times... When a new king asked that question, they asked it with a real purpose. And the purpose of this, if was there anyone still alive of the old king's house? And the reason they asked that is because they would want to eliminate, to get rid of any rivals. They didn't want someone from the old king's house coming and saying, hey, I'm the rightful king. I should be the king. And then there'd be a war and big trouble. So often a new king from a new family line, a new household, would look for any potential rivals and eliminate them. You know, that's what has happened, not just in Israel, but it happened in, in all countries around this world where there were kings in times gone by. They would look to eliminate rivals. However... David wasn't looking to eliminate a rival. No, this is what he said. He says, is there anyone alive from Saul's house? I want to show God's kindness to that person. 
I want to show God's kindness to that person. You know, it makes us think, doesn't it? What type of kindness do we show to others? And who do we show kindness to? Who do we show kindness to? Or could I ask you? Who do you show kindness to? You know, many times we want to show kindness to our friends. And that's good. Yeah, that's good to show kindness to our friends. You know, I, and I can think how I've done that. But maybe when I was at school, and even when I got a bit older, I would show kindness to someone I thought, well, if I show kindness to them, then that will really help me, uh, help me in life. Uh, to get something. Maybe they've got something and I can enjoy that. You know, when I was at school, perhaps they had a toy or they were in the football team. And if I showed kindness to them, I could be in their group. No. For David, he wanted to show kindness to someone who could have been looked on as a potential rival. And David also had everything. He was the king. And he said, I want to show the type of kindness that God shows. God shows a kindness, not because he needs something from people, the Bible says, but just because he is kind and shows kindness. And so David asked the question. And what happens? One of the older servants, his name was Ziba, comes before David and says, well, actually there is. There is someone still alive from the household of Saul. In fact, it's his grandson. And his grandson is the son of Jonathan. Now, Jonathan and Saul are no longer with us. But there is this person called, now listen to this, Mephibosheth. I wonder if you could say that. Mephibosheth. That's a long name, isn't it? We don't hear that these days. But Mephibosheth was the son of Jonathan, the grandson of Saul, and he was still alive. But what had happened to him is that when he was young, his nurse, who looked after him, had dropped him and actually broken both his legs. And they'd never healed properly. I mean, there wasn't the hospitals then which we have now in this country. And Mephibosheth, was unable to walk and he actually lived not in Jerusalem where David lived if you look at the map he lived in a place called Lodibar and that wasn't really a great place to live it was in the back of beyond as they might say anyway David sends a message get Mephibosheth down here to come to see me. Now I don't know how Mephibosheth got there, he obviously didn't walk, but what happens is he appears before David and I guess he's probably wondering what is David going to say? And the first thing David says is this, don't be afraid. Whew. I reckon Mephibosheth must have thought, oh well, that's good, don't be afraid. And what happens is David tells Mephibosheth all that he is going to do for him. Mephibosheth must have been thinking, this is fantastic. Wow, this man, the king, has a thought towards me. You know, Mephibosheth knew that he couldn't do anything. He couldn't work for David, really. He couldn't be in his army. But David was going to show kindness to him. And this was extraordinary amazing love and kindness for Mephibosheth that the king would have such a thought towards well this one who many would think was an enemy of David and David gets his servant Ziba before him and says Ziba everything that was once Saul's you're going to give to Mephibosheth and we're going to make sure Mephibosheth has some land He's going to have people to work on this land, so like he'll have a business. He'll be able to live nearby, give him all the things that were Saul's. 
And then he looks at Mephibosheth. And he says, Mephibosheth, you will be able to come and eat with me at my table at any time. Not just one off occasion, but any time you can come and eat with me. Now, that was a high honour. To be invited to the king's table, to share a meal with him, it showed that you were valued, it showed friendship as well. And Mephibosheth was invited to come at any time. You know, David was really showing. Well, what did he want to show? The sort of kindness and the sort of love that God shows. That was what was in the heart of David. Because the Bible says that, Christianity teaches that, that God shows great love to people who actually can't do anything for him. And that is the type of love that God showed. He showed it when he sent his son Jesus Christ into this world. And he invites people to come to him, to trust in him and to be close to him. That's the message of the Bible. And so that's the one great act of David I want to bring before you today. However, however, David wasn't the perfect king. If we actually look at this family tree line again, you see that? David is a king and he is in the line of eventually the one who will come and be recognised as the one who is the perfect king. One who will one day be seen as the King of Kings, the Lord Jesus Christ. You see that on the line of David. And the Lord Jesus Christ was called David's son in the long line there. But also the Bible says that he was before David as well. He always existed. Anyway, back to David. We thought of one good episode. Well, David wasn't perfect. And this next episode I'm going to tell you about shows that. But it does show how he responded. So do listen. Now, what happens when David is the king? And he's probably a little bit older at this point. And the kings were meant to go out with their armies if there was trouble to, to where there was war. But David didn't on this occasion. He kept in the capital city. And one day he's on his rooftop and he's looking around and he sees something. Well, let's be more accurate. He sees someone he likes. It's a lady, a woman. But this woman is married to someone else. But nevertheless, David summons her to come to him. Her name was Bathsheba. And she comes to David's place. And what happens is quite terrible. That David gets Bathsheba pregnant. To have a child. And not only that, David, when he's seeking to hide all of this up, actually gets her husband, who was a really good man in the army, murdered in battle. Now Bathsheba has this child and, and she comes to be with David because her husband is dead. And David is hoping no one will say anything. He knows about it. He knows what he's done is wrong. Terribly, terribly wrong. But no one says anything to him. He's the king. And that's all being kept hidden. Silent. Until one day, a man called Nathan comes before David the king and says these words. You have sinned 
You disrespected God by your wrong doing. You see what's happened? Nathan has confronted David and says you have done wrong and you have disrespected God by your wrong doing. What will David do? Well, let me ask you a question. How do we react when we are told we have done wrong? When we're told we've done wrong, how do we react? You know, we, we can make excuses, can't we? Say, well, well, it's no big deal. Every, everyone else does it. Um, yeah, well, I was feeling really bad at the time. I, I just felt really bad, so I did this. We can actually deny it. Try and get out of it, sort of deny all things. No, 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 no. Prove it, prove it. We can say that, can't we? We can blame others. You know, they made me do it. But David didn't do any of that. Now, as the king, he had a lot of authority. But do you know what he did? He actually confessed that he was truly wrong, that he had done wrong. You know, it does take a lot of courage at times to admit that we've done wrong. But it is the right thing to do if we have done wrong, to confess that. What David says, I have sinned against the Lord. David recognised that what he had done Yes, it was a sin against others, but primarily it was a sin against God. God has put laws and rules down and he had broken them. And sin is the disobedience, not doing the things that God tells us to do or doing the things that he tells us not to do. And so David says, I have sinned against the Lord God. You know, the Lord God has been so good to me all my life and is still good. And he said, I have sinned against him. And you know what David did? He wrote a song. It's called a psalm. Let me read a little bit of that psalm to you. Here we go. He says this, God, be merciful to me. You are loving because you are always ready to be merciful. Wipe out my wrongs. There we go. Wipe out my wrongs. It was as if David was saying, here's a record, and on it, it's got my sin. It's got my sin. But David said, God, you are loving and merciful. Would you wipe it out, not have a record of it? Would you make, as it were, the slate clean? Could you do that, God? Be merciful. I don't deserve it, but would you do that? You know, the Bible actually says that God, where we confess our wrongdoing, is able to wipe our sin out if we've trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he says. He says that because the Lord Jesus Christ died upon the cross and took the punishment for sin, that any sin that is against us can be wiped out. That's what the teaching of Christianity is. God is able to do that. Not forget about it, but wipe it out because Jesus took the punishment himself. And so David asked God to wipe out his sin. And then he says something else. Listen to this. He says, you are the one I have sinned against. I have done what you say is wrong. And so David recognised that he had done terrible wrong. I think we'd all agree that was terribly wrong what he did, wasn't it? But he knew that God, God was just. Yes, God would punish sin but God could forgive sin and we know perhaps a little bit more than David knows because we know the truth the full truth about the Lord Jesus Christ that's what the the Bible teaches 
about that. That's the teaching of Christianity, what God is able to do. And so David was forgiven by God. God was loving, kind and merciful to him. And David wrote other songs. Let me just leave one more song. This one's called Psalm 119. And in it he wrote this. How can a young person live a pure life? He can do it by obeying your word. You know, David reflected about what he'd done wrong. And he says, well, how could I have lived that poor life? How could I have avoided that mistake? But if I'd have lived according to God's word all the time, yes, that would have been better for me. He forgot God at that time, he says, but now I want to live a pure life. And so David, a good king, but not a perfect king. But he points ultimately to the one who would be the perfect king, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, thanks very much for listening. I know you'll have listened well, but what we're going to do now, we are going to have a little revision. We are going to do again true or false. So get ready for true or false. OK, true or false? Here we go. We've got eight questions uh, today, all based on that lesson. You can do the up for true, the down for false. You can give it like that. You can go it like that. You can shout out true, false, whatever you want. We can just whisper it. Up to you. Keep your own score. Let's see how we get on. So first question is this. David wrote songs called Psalms. David wrote songs called Psalms. Is that true or false? Well, the answer, of course, is true. There we go. Psalms. P-S-A-L-M-S. -S. Right. Number two. Probably all got number one right. Did you? Number two. Here we go. In one of his psalms, David wrote, the king is my shepherd. Listen. In one of his psalms, David wrote, the king is my shepherd. True or false? Well, the answer is false. No, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. So that's question number two. Have you got two out of two? Here we go. Number three. Let's go. David decided to eliminate any rivals to his throne. David decided to eliminate any rivals to his throne. True or false? The answer is false. No, some kings would have done that, but David was not seeking to eliminate rivals for the throne. He didn't do that. Okay, number three that was. Let's go to number four. David showed kindness to Saul's grandson, Mephibosheth. David showed kindness to Saul's grandson, Mephibosheth. Is all of that statement true or is any part false? The answer is... True. Well done, he did. Saul's grandson, Mephibosheth. I wonder if you could learn how to spell that word. Wow, that's a difficult word to spell, isn't it? Mephibosheth. Wow. Here we go. So we're going to go to question number five now, isn't it? Question number five. David showed Mephibosheth kindness because he knew that he would receive something in return. David showed Mephibosheth Fibosheth kindness because he knew that he would receive something in return. Is that true or is that false? And the answer is false. Yeah, no, David knew he couldn't get anything. David was the king, he had everything he wanted. So he just showed God's kindness. 
Okay, now we're to number six. Here we go, number six. David was a perfect king. David was a perfect king. True or false? Well, the answer is false. He was good, but he wasn't perfect. He was not a perfect king. Which is comforting, isn't it? Because he knew God's forgiveness and... I know I'm not perfect. Number seven, number seven. After David sinned, he asked God to be merciful and wipe out his sins. After David sinned, he asked God to be merciful and wipe out his sins. True or false? Okay, have a think. And the answer, of course, is... True. Remember that? We put there sins and David said, God, be merciful and wipe them out. And God would have done it. He would have wiped out that as if there was no record of them against David because David was forgiven. Right. That was number seven. Let us go to the last one. David tried to make excuses for doing wrong. David tried to make excuses for doing wrong. True or false? The answer to that is false. He didn't try to make excuses. He confessed what he did was wrong. So there we go. Eight questions. How did you get on? Did you get eight out of eight? Well done to you if you did. Don't worry if you didn't. Thanks for listening. Thanks for participating. And I hope you enjoyed it and also learned something about that great figure in the Bible, King David. So goodbye from me and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.